At this time, Brother Charles Worley is coming to give us a message this morning that the Lord has laid upon his heart. It's always an honor to have him here. He always excites us. He always has some things to tell us that we may never have heard before. And uh, he's always alive and ready to go. So, And that's what we like about him is he's a good preacher, been preaching for a long time. So, Brother Charles, you come. Well, I tell you what, you're wondering what I'm doing here, and I'm wondering what you're doing there. But I'll tell you what, we're all here, and praise God, resurrection morning. Well, amen. 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 We know good and well that the Lord got up. Amen. That's what killed, they uh, tried to kill the Apostle Paul. He's preaching, he's alive, he's alive. And they said, no, we saw him crucified. But on that third morning, thank God he got up. Amen. Amen. And you know what? That's why that you and I are here today, because he got up. And I'm glad. Thank God. I am glad. Now, I don't, I, the preacher called me. I, listen, I love you, Pastor. I wouldn't do this for nobody but him and Jesus. Amen. My wife had some groceries of cooking. You wouldn't believe. And uh, But anyhow, we can eat when we get. How many of you are glad you're saved? Amen. Amen. Some of you ain't, but you'll get glad after a while. Amen. It's good to be saved. And it's good to know you're saved. Let me read some, uh, some scripture. Uh, since I'm the only one up here, I guess this is a one-man show. And I'm the only man up here. I was going to get the piano player. Where is she to, to, to preach? But she's left. <laughs> Does she ever preach? Not really. Oh, I was just kidding. I appreciate Brother Tracy driving me, coming down. I woke up this morning with heaven on my mind. You know, uh, let me, uh, Luke chapter 24, I don't have a uh, quote, unquote, Easter message. Would that be the way? Well, that's the way it is. Anyhow, let's stand. Let me read this. And uh, then I'll bring you a message, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Good to see this crowd here t t today. Uh, I'm always uh, used to seeing tonight, but thank God today. Hey, listen now, if you don't come back tonight, you will hurt my feelings. I'm not, I just want you to know that. If you want to hurt a man's feelings that's already got his back broke, and, and a few other ailments, then you stay at home. But now if you want to make me happy, come on back. And you say, well, preacher, I'm going to go to bed. My God, don't go to bed on Easter. Hey, let's get up and get at it. Hey, Amen. I'm, I'm just so glad. You know, uh, everybody is looks happy and you look like you're awake some of you do and uh i tell you what you know uh that song everybody will be happy over there hallelujah i like the thought that dear old man i may have told this but that dear old man he said preacher is everybody going to be happy in heaven i said everybody everybody will be happy well, he said, I sure don't want to miss it. I said, why is that? He said, to my knowledge, my wife ain't never been happy, and I want to go just to see her happy. Amen. Said it. <laughs> hey, you know, you can turn that around, women. A man, you know. But I'll tell you what, I'm just so glad, I'm thankful that I'm saved. I thank God. 
You know, you think about where you could be. But I'm glad that Jesus loved me. I'm so glad that he saved me. And so thankful that I could be with y'all, believers in the Lord. I appreciated the dear brother Sunday school class. And uh, he's talking about, you know, we're near in the shore, buddy. If Jesus come right now, it won't interfere with anything I have planned. Not one thing. Let me read this. In Luke chapter 24, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices with which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found, listen, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. How about that? They were, they were all worried about who will roll the stone away. We'll get there, but we won't be able to roll a stone away. You know, us Christians a lot of times create our problems before we ever get to them. I do. Yeah, and you're a preacher. Yeah, but I'm flesh. Sometimes I, I worry about stuff that I don't need to worry about because it ain't going to happen. I just praise God. Hallelujah. All of the problems, all the heartaches, thank God they're gone, they're done. And you know what? I'm glad today. As I, as I try to preach, I, uh, I wanted to say, I just praise God for your pastor. Pray for him. He's, he's going through some some rough times, and if I can be just a little help to him and to the Lord, I want to do that. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the burden that we don't have. You know, America is in a shape that's never been before. We'll never be as we used to be. But I'll tell you one thing. There's a better day. A better day coming. Father, bless your word. And God, we love you. We thank you for all you are going to do. Lord, I pray you'll anoint us from our head to our toes. God, may we say something that'll stir our hearts, that'll stir us up and make us realize Lord, it'll not be long, and it'll be too late to worry, too late to pray. So help us now in Jesus' precious name. You be seated, and I'll read one more verse and bring you just a little simple message. The, bless, the burden that we don't have, listen, let me read uh, in, in, in Romans chapter 9. Uh, in verse 9 and verse number 1. I was thinking about, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ got up. He's alive today, and he'll save you if you're lost. But if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood and die that way, then an eternal lake of fire is waiting for you. But you know what? I have good news to bring. Thank God you don't have to go to hell. Amen. I've got good news. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus got up on that Easter, first Easter morning. And that's why that you and I are here today and why that we can say and do what we are doing. 
So Paul said, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. Listen at this now. For my brethren, my kinsmen, my first, second, third cousin, think about it, children. You just think about it. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, listen at this, might be saved. My kinsmen, according to the flesh. He said in verse 4, Who are Israelites to the whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Listen. As we look at this verse of Scripture and as we think about it, uh, I know when I realize this is Easter Sunday, and I'm so glad, thank God. But you didn't come to hear me talk about the bunny rabbit or an egg. You come to hear me talk about Jesus. Hey, I don't have a message on the Easter bunny. I don't have a message on the eggs, but I've got a message on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen, you think about this. Uh, the founder of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he, the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. He didn't come into this world uh, to do a lot of things that people say, but he came into this world, into this world to save sinners sinners. In, in Matthew, he said, for I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Somebody will say, I'm too bad to be saved. No, you're just right to be saved. You say, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know what a God we have either. Hey, he takes all of our sins. He nailed them to the cross and they're behind his back. Hey, they're in the deep of the sea. They're as far as the east is from the west. You know what? Your sins are gone. Glory to God. You say, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. I don't care what you've done. You say, but I think about it. You might, but God, hallelujah, he forgot about it. You know what? He don't even know about it. You say, uh, Lord, you know what? I don't believe it's really right uh, for us as Christians uh, to uh, try to repent over stuff we've already repented of. And God has saved us. You know what? Somebody, uh, and I, uh, there was a lady uh, in the church I pastored had an abortion. And you know what? She tried to repent. I said, have you asked God to forgive you? She said, oh, yes. I said, oh, hush. He forgave you. Forget about it. And thank God this to live your life. You say, but I had a bad marriage. Hey, there's millions of bad marriages. That don't mean you're supposed to quit God. Amen. That's good preaching, Brother Worley. Listen, it, uh, some people say, well, I did this and I did that. Hey, who cares what you've done? Thank God. It's what he did on Calvary, praise God. And he gave us life for death. And I praise God for that. Hey, you know what? Listen, you think about this. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know that word seek means he diligently sought. I wasn't looking for God, sir. I was not looking for God, but the Holy Ghost came that day. I was walking in my yard, and I told this, and I'll tell it till I die. And the Holy Ghost said, Charles, you're lost. 
I want to tell you something, sir. If you've never been lost and swung out over hell, you've never been saved. You say, well, I'm, I'm just a good old boy. Hell's full of good old boys. That's right. That's exactly right. You say, well, I, I, I've been baptized. That ain't worth a flip without the blood of Jesus Christ. I, I don't know whether you know it or not. You may not be aware of this, but that's good preaching. Amen. If I was sitting out there, I'd Amen. I was a preaching in a Lutheran church. It, it, I, I don't, it's, and yeah. It's amazing how I got in there. But I led this lady to God that was dying, and she wanted me to preach her funeral, and she was a Lutheran. Well, I, I was in there, and they told me, they said, now don't mention born again, and don't mention saved, and don't mention the blood of Jesus cleanses, I said, why? They said, they won't know what you're talking about. I said, sure enough. I couldn't wait to get in that pulpit. <laughs> and to say the least, the preacher didn't even look at me when we left. You know, he thought, I told that idiot. But anyway, what I was going to say, I was preaching about the blood and being born again. Heaven's my home. Hallelujah. I'm going there through the blood of Jesus. And I said, that's good preaching. They ought to be a two or three Lutherans. Amen. And they was. They said, Amen. I said, well, praise God. I'll just keep preaching then. You know what? I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who he is. And better than that, I'm glad that he knows who I am. Hey, they don't know. I'm, I'm glad my name is somewhere besides in the courthouse. My name uh, is in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know what a jail looks like, you know. And I ain't going to tell you some terrible story about me being in jail. I was just in there and right out. Hey, listen, I want us this morning, I know this is Easter, and I understand that, but I want us to have a burden for somebody that's not saved. Listen, there's got to be that conviction of a need for somebody. There's somebody in your family that don't know God. There's somebody in your home they don't know God. There's somebody that you love with all your heart, and they don't know God. And if the phone rang when you got home and the hospital said, come and, and identify so-and-so, you think, my God, that's my dear brother, or that's my uncle, or that's this or that. You say, we don't want to hear that on Easter. When do you want to hear it? When do you want to hear it? Hey, it's too late to weep when somebody's dead and in hell. Amen. I had a cousin of mine that died, and we didn't know whether he was saved or not. He came around, came around and, uh, and, and they, we didn't have carpet on the floor and they were they were to hear teardrops all the way through there and I thought God if there'd have been that many tears shed while he was alive we wouldn't have to wonder where he is we'd know if we could get him saved hey don't let somebody slip through your hands and go to hell listen you think about this. I think about this song, and it gets me under conviction. Must I go an empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior? So, not one soul with which to grieve. Must I empty-handed go? I don't want to go to heaven 
by myself. I'm sure I've mentioned this before as I've preached here so many times, but I don't want to go to heaven by myself. Hey, I wouldn't want to go to heaven. I want my wife to go to heaven and she's safe. I want my I want my people that I love, I want them to go to heaven. Listen, think about it. My God, we have got to get out. Statisticians tell us that every time the second hand moves, somebody goes into eternity. Many people without God, without any hope, go. The Bible said, hell has enlarged itself without measure. I don't know what all that means, but I know one thing. We need to have a broken heart. God, Charles Worley needs a broken heart for people that don't know the Lord. You say, but I, there was a fellow at a church I pastored. He said, I killed, I shot my daddy and killed him because he was beating my mama to death. He was going to kill her. He said, what would Jesus do with me? I said, if you'll get lost, he'll save you. He said, I don't believe that. You don't believe the Bible. He said, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life. Amen. You see, the thing about it is... Uh, when you, when you begin to think about somebody dying without God and no hope, listen, I was coming down I-40, and it said this, the next five exits you can get off and go into Morgan. We went by one, and I thought, that's one, two, three, four, and we went by exit number five. There was no more exits going in to Morganton. And could I tell you something, sir, with a tear in my eye, there's no exits out of hell. No exits. Don't ever die without God. Don't ever be caught without God. Listen, you think about, you know, uh, the, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses said that there was, there's no hell. And I thought if there's no hell, I've spent 60 some years traveling, wearing out cars, trying to get people saved. My soul, if there's no hell, I'm the biggest fool that's ever lived. As some people say everybody's going to heaven, going to go anyhow, and everybody else is going to hell. No, if you'll come, he said, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Amen. Thank God I love that. I'm glad. They've, they've, I've had people come. They have tattoos and, and earrings and lip rings and nose rings. I said, what do you do? I said, you come to Jesus. He'll save you. He loves you, and he'll save you. You know what? I was, I was, I know I've mentioned this, but you know, when I was in a church in another state, one of the deacons said, I want you, if you will, to please watch the news this afternoon, and I did. I said, Why? He said, just watch the news. And as I was watching the news, they showed a picture of a man, a young man and a young woman standing looking at a house as it was burning up. And they were crying and thinking, we are losing all of our furniture. We're losing everything we've ever had. And the wife looked at the husband and said, Honey, did you get the baby? He said, no. I thought you did. Listen to me. Somebody you think 
is supposed to win that person to God and they're wondering why that you've not witnessed to them. Listen, I thought you got the baby. I thought you got the baby. I thought you told them about Jesus. Some people are saying, well, I don't know if my people's, if my boys or my girls or my wife or my husband, if they're saved, listen, if they're not saved, nothing will hinder you from asking, are you saved? How come we can talk about politics, we can talk about baseball, we can talk about everything, but what about being saved? Huh? Seems like we get the lock jaw right about then. You know what the Lord Jesus said? My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities. Zacchaeus, he said, I must abide at thy house. In John 4, 4, one precious verse, that woman, she said, I don't give you a drink of water because we don't even speak to each other. Listen, he said, I must go through Samaria. He wasn't welcome in Samaria. But you know what? He told the disciples to go ahead, get something to eat. But he said, I've got to go. And when he was there, I like the way John puts this. It said, he said thus on the well. And this woman came. She had been married five times and was shacking up with that one she was with. Did Jesus jump up, run off, and fight? no, no, no. He's wanting water. She said, listen, he said, if you had asked me, I'd give you water. You wouldn't have to come and drink. You wouldn't have to come and thirst. She said, Lord, give me that water. She took a drink of that. I'm glad, glory to God. That I drunk of that water one day, and I've never, I've never wanted another savior. I've never wanted to be a say. If there's ten thousand, Jesus is, I want him to be mine. Don't you? Thank God. You know what? When you think about it, John chapter four and verse four, that woman had been married five times. Now listen, I don't mean this. I guess I do mean this. You know what? Five times that woman couldn't have been an ugly woman. Now you tell me two idiots or five idiots they said, will you marry me? Now, do you think she was as ugly as a mud fence? I mean, honey, I'm just being honest. Anybody with one eye and half sense would say she's a doll. Five times, ain't no need. They, well, I've done let the cat out of the bag. You know what? It's a lot easier to let a cat out of the bag than it is to get one back in. So I ain't going to even try to put it back in. I'm just going to leave it out. You know what? Jesus saved her. You know what? Somebody said, well, let her go on to hell. She's nothing but a rip. He said, no, you come to me. I'll save you. And he did. Glory to God. And he will. Amen. Thank God. Listen. You know, she said, I'm going to town. She went to the man's side of town, and they all followed her. And they said, you know what? She said, I want y'all to come and see a man 
that told me all things that ever I have done. Is not this the Christ? And then he saved me, and the whole city came out. Listen, you take one sinner getting born again. Thank God. And she had a burden. She had a burden. And she went to town and brought somebody with her. You know what? I don't care where you've been, what you've done, who you are. Let me tell you something. In the eyes of God, you were so precious that he laid that hand down and said, crucify me. I'm dying for that person. Listen, you know what? Uh, there was a this lady. You know what? It seems like, and I know it's not always so. You think about a woman calling and saying, somebody, just talk to my boy. He don't know God. He don't know the Lord. And you go and he's sitting there all rebellious and mad because she's asked the church to come. She's asked church people to come because she's so burdened for him. And there he is. And he's saying, well, if anybody over there at that church, if they go to heaven, I have got no, no problem. Over there, they're, all of them are hypocrites. All of them are full of the devil. I'm as good as anybody. And it so broke that mother's heart till she laying down in front of him weeping tears, saying, God, is there any way you can fix it to where I'll go to hell and not this boy? God, he didn't ask to come into the world, but I brought him into the world. Could you fix it to where I could go to hell instead of my boy? Let me ask you something. I've never had that kind of a burden. We need a burden, don't we? We need a burden. We go by and we say, invite you to church. Listen, we need a burden that'll put tears in our eyes again. Listen, it wasn't long till that boy got off of that couch laid down beside of his mama and said, will somebody, will somebody tell me about mama's God? Because somebody had a burden for him. Paul said that my kinsmen, according to the flesh, might be saved. Let's bow our heads and stand to your feet. Well, the Lord bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this Easter. We thank you for this time to be here at this church. And God, you knew this would happen eons and eons ago. So, God, I've preached the very best that I know. I've preached all I know how. I've preached what was on my heart. And, Lord, please, in Jesus' name, don't let anybody go to hell from this congregation. Our heads bowed. Our eyes are closed. Listen. You say, preacher, if I died, I know that I'm not saved. I'll promise you I'll never point you out. I'll never mention it. Would you say, I know I'm lost? Would you just slip your hand up and take it right back down? Anybody? God bless. Is there anybody here to say, preacher, 
I'm saved, but I'm not living like I should. I need a closer walk with you, God. Would you just slip your hand up all over this building? And I want to raise my hand. Let me ask you, sister, please, let's play something. Listen, I'm going to ask you a question. You say, preacher, what is it? I'm going to ask you, all of you that are saved, you say, I'm glad I'm saved, but I've got a brother. I've got somebody that I'm thinking about right now, preacher. If I heard they were in a car wreck or whatever, and they died according to their testimony, they'd be in hell. I want to ask you if you would come up here to this altar and say, God, my loved one, would you please save them? Would you just sleep out of your pew? Come up here, stand in this altar and say, God, save that one closest to hell. 